In this video, we're going to graph a parabola by plotting points. All right, so here's my equation right here. And maybe you don't even know that this is a parabola to start because you're just learning this stuff. But here we have something that's squared. And that tells me, and as long as the y is not squared, I'm going to have a parabola here. Now, doing this by plotting points can be the most tedious way to do it. But when you're first learning about these types of graphs, I think plotting points is really the way to go to see what's happening. As you learn more and more and more about these kind of graphs, you'll learn some shortcuts in order to create the graph. So plotting points, we can do this with any type of equation. All that means is I'm going to pick some value of x, whatever value of x I want, and I'm going to put it in here for these values of x, and that's going to give me an output, a y. And from that information, I'm going to be able to get an x, y point that I can come over here and graph. You can pick any number you want to start. I like to pick 0 because 0 is an easy number to uh, do arithmetic with. All right, so order of operations, I'm going to do the squared first. 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. Take away 0, take away 5, that's going to give me negative 5. So if I input 0, my y value, my output is negative 5. And I'm going to come down here and graph that. 0, negative 5. All right, let's try 1. So I'm going to do 2 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 minus 5. So order of operations, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Take away 6, take away 5. That's negative 4, take away 5 is negative 9. So now I have the point positive 1, negative 9. 1, negative 9. Let's try 2. 2 times 2 squared minus 6 times 2 minus 5. So 2 squared is 4. OK, so 2 times 4 is 8. Take away 12, take away 5. So that's negative 4, take away 5, that's negative 9 again. Interesting. So I have at the point 2, negative 9. It's right here. Let's try 3. 2 times 3 squared minus 6 times 3 minus 5. And if I'm going a little fast, pause the video and get caught up. I'm kind of going through the arithmetic a little quickly here, but um, yeah, pause it if you need to. So 3 times or 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. Take away 18, take away 5. So that's 0, take away 5. That's negative 5 again. So now I have the point 3, negative 5. 3, negative 5. All right, let's try This is looking kind of funny here. Let's try 4. So 2 times 4 squared minus 6 times 4 minus 5. So 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32, 6 times 4 is 24, 32 take away 24 is 8, take away 5 is 3, so that gives me the point 4 comma 3, over 4 up 3. Should we try 5? I'm almost out of room here, I think I can squeeze 5 down here. 2 times 5 squared minus 6 times 5 minus 5, so 5 squared is 25, times 2 is 50, 6 times 5 is 30, take away 5, so that's 20, take away 5 is 15. So that gives me the point 515, which is off my graph, but it's up here somewhere, 515. Now we didn't try a negative, we should probably do a negative value, but I can start to see the shape here, and if I know anything about quadratic equations, Quadratic meaning I have an x squared term and a y to the first power. I know it's going to make this shape called a parabola. It's going to, going to be like a u shape. If the number in front of the x squared is positive, it's going to open up like this. If this number in front of the x squared was negative, it would cause this to open down. So I start to see this shape appearing, and that makes me happy. I know I'm going to get uh, what I'm expecting. Let's go ahead and put negative 1 in. Let's see, I'm going to have to erase something. Let's erase this 5 down here and put the negative 1 in. And you might be able to look at the graph and see what to expect if you put in a negative 1, just based on what we know about the shape of this thing. 
So let's put negative 1 in here. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, right? Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Times 2 gives me a positive 2. Then I have negative 6 times negative 1, that's a positive 6, and then take away 5. So you got to be careful with your negatives, be really careful. So I have 8 minus 5 is 3, that gives me the point negative 1, positive 3. Negative 1, positive 3. So you see what's happening here? We're getting two points at the same y value. Two points at the same y value, which is a characteristic of a parabola. Let's see if I can draw this with any success. Actually, before I draw it, um, it's going to come like this, right? Before I draw the whole thing, it's going to come down like this. And then it doesn't go straight across here, right? It's going to be some kind of a U shape. So the bottom of the U is going to be halfway between these two points here. So halfway between when X was 1 and X was 2. To figure out how far down I need to go, that's a very important point. I actually need to go back over here to my table and I need to find out what I would get if X was 1 and a half. So I'm going to come over here to my table and I'm going to do that. I'm going to plug in 1.5 because I know I can see that's a very important point. That's my bottoming out point there. So I have to do 2 times 1.5 squared minus 6 times 1.5 minus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my calculator and see what I get. And you guys do the same. All right, so when I punch uh, 1.5, in for x, I got negative 9.5. So that gives me the point 1.5, negative 9.5, which is right about here. That tells me how far down I need to go. So if you if you need to find that point, find it. Plug it in there and find that bottom point. That bottom point has a very special name. It is called the vertex. So this point right here is the vertex. And there you go. There's your graph. So the next thing I want to do is talk about some important characteristics of this graph. So I'm going to take this graph and paste it onto a blank slide for us. Let's go through a list of important characteristics of a parabola. The first one is the one we just talked about, which is the vertex. So the vertex is either going to be the lowest value or the highest value if the parabola is upside down. So our vertex is at 1.5, negative 9.5 for this example. The next thing we're going to talk about is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a mere reflecting line. I gotta concentrate while I spell this word. All right, so the axis of symmetry for this parabola, get a different color here, goes right through the vertex. So it's a line, vertical line, that goes right through the vertex, and it's the reflecting line. So this side of the parabola would reflect over to this side of the parabola. Now if you remember from a previous course, the equation of a vertical line is x equals whatever value this is going through. So for us, is x equals 1.5. If you're asked what is the axis of symmetry of your, this parabola, the answer is x equals 1.5. So the value for the axis of symmetry is always going to be equal to the x value of the vertex because the axis of symmetry has to go through the vertex. All right, next thing are the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts, there might be more than one. There could actually be 0, 1, or 2. I'll show you a picture of that here in a minute. Is the points where the graph touches the x-axis. Now, sometimes you'll be able to tell from your graph exactly where those points are. But for us, those x-intercepts are not exact, right? They're right here and right here. It looks like negative point something. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess that it's approximately negative, oh, let's say 0.8, comma, 0. 
And then this point over here looks to be about 1, 2, 3.8 maybe, comma 0. We're going to learn some techniques this quarter that will allow us to find these x-intercepts exactly using um, some algebra. And sometimes you'll do the graph and your x-intercepts will be really nice and you'll be able to say exactly what they are. If you have a parabola that opens up and the vertex is above the x-axis, you could have no x-intercepts at all. Another option would be you could have a parabola where the vertex is right on the x-axis like that, and that could have one x-intercept. So your possibilities for your x-intercept, you could have zero x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or two x-intercepts. Those are all the possibilities. Even if the parabola opens down, you could have no x-intercepts if it was like that. You could have one x-intercept if the vertex was on the x-axis, or you could have two x-intercepts if the parabola intersects in two places. The next thing we want to talk about are y-intercepts. So the y-intercept is where the graph touches the y-axis. That's a little sloppy. Let's do that again. Now you're only going to have one y-intercept only in any parabola. It's always going to have one y-intercept. And ours right here where it touches the y-axis is this point which is over 0, down 5. That's our y-intercept. Next thing I want to talk about is what's called the range of the parabola. So the range is all the possible outputs. All right? It's all possible outputs or all possible y-values. So what we want to do is we want to look at this graph. Let me take some of these things out of here. And we want to see what is the largest and smallest possible y value. So I really look at the graph this way. What's the lowest point? Well, there's the lowest point of the parabola. And then there really is no highest point because this is going to continue to go up forever. So I'm going to draw a little line here over to the y-axis. And because of where the vertex is at 1.5, negative 9.5, I know the lowest possible y value is at negative 9.5. So all my possible y values are going to be any y value greater than or equal to negative 9.5. Those are all my possible y values. And we can write this in interval notation by putting bracket negative 9.5. The bracket means we want to include negative 9.5 all the way up to infinity. And we might look at interval notation a little bit uh, more in a different video. The last thing I want to look at is where the parabola is increasing and decreasing. And this is pretty straightforward and again relies heavily on the vertex. The vertex is such an important point for answering a lot of these questions. We need it for the axis of symmetry, we need it for the range, and we also need it when we ask where is the graph increasing and where is the graph decreasing? Now the answer to this question, where is it increasing and where is it decreasing, are x values. So we're really asking, for what x values is the graph increasing, meaning where are the y values getting higher, and what for what x values, for what x values are the y values going down? So really, just think about reading this parabola left to right. So if I'm reading this parabola left to right, if I start over here, we're going down. So the, the parabola is decreasing to this point, and then right at this point, it starts increasing. Okay, so all these x values from here, from 1.5 all the way over to here, all these x values see the parabola decreasing. Then once it hits, this point right here where your vertex is, all these x values, the graph is increasing. All right, how do I write that answer? So let's start with decreasing since that's the first thing we see here. Starting with x all the way to negative infinity, up until I get to the x value of the vertex of 1.5, that 
function is decreasing. Now I'm not going to include 1.5. I use a parenthesis here to say don't include 1.5. That's the interval that it's decreasing. Right? This is equivalent to saying any x value less than 1.5. This notation means the same as this notation. This is just interval notation and this is using an inequality for your notation. So here I'm saying for any x value less than 1.5, all these x values less than 1.5, you're going to see, if you're reading the graph from left to right, that graph going down or decreasing. Now, once that graph x value hits 1.5, I see the graph start increasing. So for any x value greater than 1.5, the graph is increasing. And you can see again how important this x value of the vertex is. That x value of the vertex tells you exactly when the function changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Now the way I write this in interval notation is I start with my lowest x value, which is 1.5, not including 1.5, because at 1.5, this function is this uh, graph is not increasing or decreasing. It's at the bottom, all the way up to infinity. And you always use a parenthesis with infinity because you're never going to get there. All right, guys. Well, I hope this was helpful. A lot of information here evaluating, analyzing this kind of graph. Start by plotting points. Try to figure out where that vertex is. That's a very important point. And you can always tell where the vertex is if you find two y values that are the same. Any two y values that are the same, the vertex is going to be halfway between there. Okay, this is, there's, you know, you could count the steps. There's one, two, three, four, five steps between these two points. So halfway between would be two and a half, one, two and a half. There's the middle. I found these two points are have the same y value. There's one, two, three steps between them. So halfway between here would be one and a half steps. There's going to be the vertex. That's the axis of symmetry. Super important. Then you want to get enough points on each side of that axis of symmetry by plugging in values for x in order to graph the whole entire parabola. Once you have that parabola graphed in that table, you can go through and answer these questions. What's the vertex, the axis of symmetry, where are my x-intercepts, my y-intercepts, my range, and where is the graph increasing and decreasing?